Hi, I'm John Perry, and this is my game, Scapegoat. Scapegoat is a social deduction game for three to six players. Uh, if you've played a social deduction game before, I'm confident that you're going to find that this one plays very, very differently and is something unique. Uh, but let me show you how to play, and you can see what I mean for yourself. In Scapegoat, you play the role of a criminal goat. You and your buddies have just pulled off a grand heist. Unfortunately, the cops are catching up to you, and it's only a matter of time before they do. So you've got to pin the crime on some member of your group so they can take the fall for everybody else. That person is the scapegoat. Just make sure that the scapegoat isn't you. So the basic structure of this game is that before it even starts, the scapegoat has been determined. And that gets determined by these two dice here. And you're going to see, okay, we've got a 9 and an 11. And everyone's going to check the back of their player card. So we've got our 9 down here and our 11 here. And we find, okay, it's the red player. That's going to be the scapegoat. The big catch is that one of us has information that is wrong, right? So let's check out what the red player thinks, right? Because that's supposedly the scapegoat. Oh, well, they think it's me. Okay, so that's bad news. So which one of us is right? Well, let's see what the green player thinks. Oh, look, it is the red player. Okay, so that means my information as the yellow player, I was right. But the red player has just got a wrong idea in their head. And without checking it, I know that the blue player is also gonna have the red player, and that's always how it's set up. Three out of four of us, in the case of a four player game, are gonna have information agreeing that one person is the scapegoat, but that person's information is wrong, and they need to figure out that that information is wrong and go to the cops before we can frame them. Okay, so let's go through setup for a five player game. All right, so first of all, you're gonna give out these player cards that I showed earlier. If you look in the top right corner, you can see that there's a player count that they belong to. Uh, let's put those out around the table. Everyone gets one. Next, we're going to lay out these location cards across the center of the table. You want to make sure you've got prepare all the way to the left, go to the cops all the way to the right, and these two preparation tokens here go on these little spots on the prepare card. Next, everybody has a player token in their color, and you're going to shuffle these, and then you're going to place them at the locations going from left to right. So we'll go ahead and place this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here. You never place one to go to the cops, so instead I'm going to go back to the beginning and place the last one there. And then we're going to reveal, so everyone has their starting location. Next, you're going to want to gather the evidence cards that match our player count. Player count is shown in the bottom right, and some of them are going to be, you know, say five and above. Some of them have just the number, no plus, so they only go in this five player count, so we'd include this in five, but not in six. You're going to put one face up at each location. Then you're gonna set aside three that go in what's called the stash, like so. And lastly, everyone's gonna get a few cards for their hand. So if we just deal clockwise, everyone should get the same number of cards, which in a five player game should be three. Lastly, we're going to take the two decoder dice, like I showed you earlier, roll those, and everyone secretly, of course, checks the back of their player card to figure out who they think the scapegoat is. So the player who goes first uh, is going to be the player whose token ended up furthest to the left, in this case, the orange player. And then you just go clockwise after that with each player taking a turn. Uh, so the steps of your turn are listed on your player card as a reference. We've got three steps here. Step one is movement. Uh, that means I need to move my player token, which is over here now, to some new location. I can't stay where I am, but I can move anywhere else. Let's say I move over here to the spy. Second step is I'm going to take the action of the location I just went to. So this location here, if we read it, it says spy, and I get to look at any player's hand. So that's the action I'm going to take for this turn. And then lastly, the third and final step is the evidence swap. So I'm gonna look at my hand and I've gotta leave one of these pieces of evidence behind. Now there's an important rule here, which is that I have to prioritize leaving behind my own color. So if I have any cards with the color red on them, which I do, you can see this one has half red, since I'm the red player, that means I really have no choice. I gotta leave this card behind. If I had no red cards in hand, uh, like this, then I could just freely pick and leave behind whatever card I wanted. But in this case, I've got a card with red on it, so I've got to leave that behind. 
And then in exchange, I'm gonna pick up the card that was at my location, and that ends my turn. Okay, let's talk about the various actions at the locations and what they do. I already mentioned the spy action, which allows you to look at any other player's hand. In addition, we have the trade action, which means you simultaneously trade one card with another player at the table. Uh, and then we have the stash action. This involves the cards in the stash that we placed here during setup. There's three cards always next to the stash. And for the stash action, you're gonna pick up one of these three cards that is in the stash, it's your choice. So let's say I opt for the one in the middle here. And then I'm gonna temporarily add that to my hand. And then I'm gonna have to put a card back in its place, and it's my choice what I wanna put back. So I could put back the same card I picked up, or I could put back a different card, but I fill that gap that I left. In addition, we have the go to the cops action, which means you flip this card and the cops arrive. We're gonna talk more about that later in the video. And lastly, I wanna talk about the prepare action. So the prepare action means you're getting ready to frame the scapegoat. And there's always two tokens here at the beginning of the game. So the first time you go here, all you do is you just take a token. Uh, once both tokens are taken, this card flips over and the action there changes. So now next time I go there, it depends whether or not I have a token, okay? So let's say I don't have a token. Well, in that case, I'm going to steal a token from someone who does. Uh, if I do have a token, that means I'm prepared to frame. And so the action is that I'm going to initiate a frame attempt, which we're going to talk about next. Okay, so let's say for this example that yellow is the real scapegoat. That means the other four of us are all plotting against yellow. Hopefully yellow hasn't figured that out. And plotting against yellow in this case means collecting yellow cards. So I want to have a yellow card in my hand, and I'm hoping that my other three teammates also have a yellow card in their hand. And once someone initiates a frame attempt, everyone at the table has to simultaneously choose a card in their hand to reveal. So let's say it goes like this. Now, if you look at it, we all have yellow, except the yellow player, of course. Uh, and so that means that the frame attempt is successful because it's unanimous, except for the scapegoat. And yellow, assuming they are the real scapegoat, would lose the game. Um, but let's say like one of my teammates here was not ready uh, and green showed a blue card. Well, that's kind of bad news. Now the game continues, although we've probably given up the game at this point because yellow now can see that most of us are plotting against them. So you want to try to be as ready as possible before you attempt uh, to frame the scapegoat. So let's say we did a really bad job keeping yellow in the dark. Uh, well then, yellow's recourse is to go to the cops before we can frame them. Uh, they can jump over here and then flip this card. And once you flip this card, the cops show up, the game is over instantly, and the scapegoat wins the game. Now here's the thing, you have to verify who is the real scapegoat, right? That's who is uh, pointed to by the majority of player cards. Um, so one fun way you can do that is you count one, two, three, and everyone points at who they think the scapegoat is. And in this case, if they all pointed at yellow, that's good news, right? That means yellow was correct to go to the cops, right? But it's very easy to get so suspicious of your teammates that you might go to the cops even though you're not actually the scapegoat. Um, and it's always the real scapegoat that wins, uh, not necessarily the person who went to the cops. Now one small little detail, for a six player game you'll see here, uh, in six players you may also flip this card during the turn of the player sitting three seats to your left. So uh, specifically in a six player game, this means that the scapegoat has one other chance to go to the cops, just reach across the table and uh, grab the card and flip it uh, without it being your turn. Okay, let's end with a final note about communication. You'll see here in the rule book, it says very clearly all discussion and communication is allowed. This involves nonverbal communications like winks, nods, finger points, and footsie. So that's right, you can actually say whatever you want in this game. You can say, uh, outright who the scapegoat is. Of course, that would be a bad idea, right? It's, it's bad to talk openly in this game because you want to keep someone in the dark. Again, remember in my example, if yellow is the scapegoat, uh, I need to communicate, say, with orange to make sure they've got a yellow card in their hand, but I can't just say, do you have a yellow card in your hand? Because then obviously the yellow player is just going to go to the cop. So you've got total freedom with communication, but at the same time, you are limited by the fact that you've got to be subtle about it or you're going to lose the game. And that's it. You now have all the rules for scapegoats. So uh, have fun playing and thank you for watching this video.